this is the fourth summer we've worked at this site and this is a uh, what we call a multi-component site. It's a place where people came uh, probably for more than 2,000 years to live on this bluff top uh, overlooking the Huron River for a lot of different reasons. People, uh, we know people came here around 800 BC uh, to build kind of a ceremonial enclosure or community area which is marked by a, a ditch feature that's about 150 feet across and we found evidence of, of basically them coming, uh, bringing food probably, and performing ceremonies and perhaps dances and community activities and things like that. Uh, we started work here actually in 2008 and we just did some uh, what's called geophysical survey where we uh, prospected across the area with some instruments to look uh, below the surface to identify uh, what we call features, different uh, cooking pits and storage pits, and give us some idea where to start working. And in 2009, we actually started our excavation. I'm standing next to a, a two series of colored posts that we put in uh, that mark the lines of uh, prehistoric stockades, or wooden posts that were set in the ground by Native Americans, we think about five to 600 years ago, to uh, enclose a village site, a farming village where they grew corn and beans and squashed, uh, built uh, communal houses, uh, and lived inside here maybe from spring through fall every season. I'm standing at the, the edge of a, an oval enclosure. This was a structure that was built, uh, we think, around 800 BC, and it's marked by these blue stakes uh, that we see here. It was about 150 feet in diameter on its long axis, and again, it enclosed a, a small bit of space that was used for ceremonies um, and uh, rituals, uh, get-togethers, probably by Native Americans. Here I'm standing in uh, the location where in 2009 we found the remains of a pit house, a sunken floor structure that we think was built around 1500 AD. And the yellow posts in front of me and behind me demarcate the outlines of that structure. The floor of this house would have been about uh, two and a half feet below where I'm standing. It was a, basically a flat basin uh, with an entry ramp. In front of me is a, the post mark, a narrow inclined ramp that went up to the surface. Uh, it probably was a winter structure, a winter lodge, maybe just a sleeping hut where a small group of people, maybe a family came and uh, spent the winter in here just at nighttime. In the middle of the structure we found a, a hearth or a fire pit feature, just a small little pit uh, with burned earth and ash in it right about here. And it would have been just enough to keep people warm that were sleeping inside this small structure. And in the inside we found small little post molds running along the walls here behind me and over to my left that again are just about the size where someone could lay down like on a sleeping bench or a platform with the fire in the middle and maybe the kids sleeping around the fire inside. Uh, so this is a, a partially reconstructed uh, pottery vessel uh, from the area of era around 600 AD. This is what we call the early uh, late woodland period and specifically in Ohio we call it the Green Creek phase. It's extremely thin. This is very thin, very well made pottery and it is also cord marked on the exterior but with extremely fine uh, uh, spun cordage that has kind of an overlapping pattern. It, this would be the, the shoulder or the side of the rounded shoulder of the pot. Uh, it would have had maybe a flat base but probably a rounded base as well. It would extend up to a rim which is missing which would have been up here. Uh, this would have been the top of the pot and it might have been uh, perhaps the base would have been down about where my hand is here. These would have been excellent cooking pots because they are so thin, but they're very durable. So this type of what we call Green Creek ware is very distinctive for that time period, about 600 AD, and a number of examples of this were found in the pits inside this large uh, structure. Now between the early woodland period and the time I just talked about the 600 uh, AD period, we had a, an interesting occupation by people uh, that came into the area, we think around 200 AD. And this relates uh, to what we call the Hopewell culture occupation of southern Ohio. And again, the Hopewell culture were some of the preeminent mound builders and earthwork builders in Ohio. And they made some wonderful constructions in southern Ohio. And until recently, we didn't have a lot of evidence of them being present in northern Ohio. But the Heckelman site is one place where we do find their artifacts in some abundance. Uh, probably the most distinctive artifacts are these bladelets. These are small stone flakes that are made in a special way from prepared cores. They look like little stone razor blades, actually. Uh, one other type of, of stone tool that's, that's uh, distinctive is this uh, corner notch projectile point. Uh, again, this might have been a knife or a spear tip. It's, again, very finely made. It's very thin, very well made. It is also made of this flint ridge flint. It's not as colorful as the, the bladelet variety, but it's uh, a gray variety that was very useful. 
This was found in a pit feature along with other bladelets uh, and it dates to the Middle Woodland period. Again, we think between about 200 and 400 AD. Now, there's two other artifacts that were particularly significant uh, that were found on the floor of the pit house, which is a uh, uh, kind of a keyhole shaped um, sunken floor structure that dates to the village occupation about 1500 AD. And as we excavated on the very bottom of the floor, we found two artifacts side by side, close together. One was a deer bone awl, and an awl is uh, basically a, a perforating or like a leather working tool. This is basically part of a, a deer uh, shoulder blade that's been cut and ground into a very sharp point, and slightly polished, and then drilled at one end, probably for a little thong handle or maybe as a more around the neck just as a convenient way to move it around. It was a complete artifact that was sitting on the floor. And then next to it was a shell pendant. This is made out of uh, freshwater clam shell uh, from the area. And it was carved into the shape of what we think is a bear claw, uh, as if you uh, had a kind of a defleshed claw with the knuckle bone and then the claw part sticking out. And it's been uh, drilled. So it's a little pendant, it's tied to something, maybe tied to clothing or something, with little, uh, uh, we call punctates, just a little bit of a, a decoration across the top there, and it would have been a, a pretty important ornament. And I believe both these things were just deliberately left in the bottom of this pit house. This typical day here is pretty much what you see right now. Um, we take like a, a flat floor and we, we try to make it flatter. We take a, and uh, start a unit off and um, look what Jim's doing over here after we're all done shovel shaving and scraping and trawling. Um, we um, take pictures and then try to find features and hoe it down. And some of the pottery found was um, early woodland to probably late woodland period pottery. And um, some of it was really thin and really detailed with some of it's accord marked and some of it's plain and just a bunch of different designs and decorations on it. Uh, in past years, we found additional uh, pieces of pottery. This is a partially reconstructed uh, vessel from the early woodland time period. They had these flat bottoms, and they had these kind of uh, very outsloping walls. Uh, this is just a piece of the base that's been reconstructed. And it may have been perhaps the rim would have been about that high uh, when it was completed. This was probably a cooking pot, uh, also maybe used for storage. And again, it has kind of the very thick um, uh, walls and the flat bottom that's very distinctive for this time period. Uh, this group is troweling a floor of the excavation unit. This is the step uh, before the brushing. This is basically to remove the rest of the plow zone, which is the upper about uh, 8 to 10 inches of topsoil that's been turned over by the plow over hundreds of years. And again, expose the light colored subsoil uh, against which we can see these different kinds of feature stains. So it's a, a matter of just using these hand trowels, taking off thin layers, uh, and exposing that light-colored subsoil. Uh, this is an excavation unit that's almost completed. Uh, Michelle is actually uh, sweeping the floor. We actually, the last step is to sweep up the fine dried uh, dirt and dust on top. And the point is to reveal these dark stains you can see in front of me uh, in this excavation unit. Uh, some of which represent prehistoric pit features, cooking pits, and even pulse molds, these small little uh, organic stains where the palisade or stockade stakes were set in the ground. Uh, we have to excavate in this way and make a nice clean floor so we actually can see these stains very clearly, map them, and then excavate them. The opportunity to come out and work at a field school is, is not necessarily uh, ubiquitous across the United States. You don't necessarily find this opportunity everywhere, and the museum's field school specifically is really, really good. It's inexpensive, relatively speaking. It's a couple hundred dollars a week for a full-fledged field school, and it gives people, anyone who wants to, the opportunity to come out here uh, and get experience in an area that is very archaeologically rich. Most people think of Egypt or some other area, but actually Ohio, uh, with a lot of areas that have not been disturbed by development and a lot of rivers and really fertile soils, had a lot of people throughout prehistory. So there's a lot that can be done here.